Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's explore the trigonometric equation that defines the simple harmonic motion, especially in the case where we have a spring and an object with mass, a block. Let's assume that the surface is frictionless, so there's no energy loss. And what we do is we pull the block out to a certain distance A. We store up the kinetic energy, which is one, or I should say potential energy, which is one half Ka squared. And then we let go and the block will begin to move back and forth. That motion back and forward as the position x changes from positive a to negative a back to positive a back to negative a like this, we can actually represent that by a trigonometric function like a cosine or a sine. In the case that we pull the block to this position right here, then we'll let go. So when t is equal to 0, the position is equal to a, x is equal to a, cosine of omega t is the function that best defines that. Of course, A represents the amplitude of the oscillation, and the cosine function defines where you will find the object, the block, as a function of time. Omega here is really the square root of k over m. It's what we call the angular frequency, and that would be in radians per second. And k being the spring constant, the bigger the spring constant, the stronger the, the, stronger the spring, the faster the object will be pulled back to the equilibrium point or pushed back to the equilibrium point, so the faster the frequency of the motion. The bigger the mass, the more difficult it will be because the more inertia the block has, the slower the block will go back and forth. So the angular momentum is definitely uh, proportional to the square root of the spring constant and inversely related to the square root of the mass. So here we have the equation x, which is of course now a function of time, can be written as 8 times the cosine of omega t. But since omega is equal to the square root of k over m, what we could do is we could write it as well as this. We could say that x as a function of time is equal to a times the cosine of the square root of k over m times t. Let's go back to the original equation x as a function of time is equal to a times the cosine of omega t and explore this equation slightly differently. The relationship be with, between what we call angular frequency and frequency period, if we want to calculate how many times per second the object goes back and forth, we call that the frequency of oscillation. And the relationship between omega and f is that omega is equal to 2 pi times f. So for every one complete oscillation, there's two pi radians in the oscillatory frequency. So what we could do is we could write omega as two pi f, and so we can also write this equation, x as a function of time, is equal to a times the cosine of two pi f times t. Well, f, that's the frequency of oscillation, is also related to the period. We know that the period is equal to one over the frequency or otherwise we could write frequency equal to 1 over the period. With other words, we can come in here and write this equation as x as a function of time is equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi. Instead of f, we can write 1 over the period, so 2 pi divided by the period, times t. Now, that's an interesting form of the equation because that kind of defines the equation. I, I do know that I put that sideways, x is up, t is in this direction, and notice as time goes by, the position in the x direction is defined by this cosine function. But notice that every so often, when t equals a certain value, the block goes exactly the same place it was before, and again, when a certain amount of time elapses again, you can see that, again, the block will be in that very same spot. What is this time period? How long does it take for it to get to that particular point? Well, let's come over here and look at this. When the, when the time is equal to a time period, then we have t divided by t goes to 0, and then we have the cosine of 2 pi. Or, when t becomes 2 times the time period, 2 times the time period, t divided by t, now we get 4 pi, and let me write it down. So, if t is equal to, if t is equal to big T, the period, the time it takes for the block to make one complete oscillation, we get x when time is equal to the period, that's equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi times the period divided by the period. The periods cancel out, and you get the cosine of 2 pi, which is equal to 1. 1 times a gives you the position where this is at when the time equals one time period. If the time is equal to 2 times the time period, 
the time for two oscillations. Then we have x with t equals to 2t is equal to a times the cosine of 2 pi times 2t divided by t. Those t's cancel out. Now we get a times the cosine of 4 pi. Again, the cosine of 4 pi is equal to 1. Again, we get the position equal to there. So that means that every time a complete time period elapses, when time equals a time period, the, the block gets back to its original position where it started from. How do we define, how can we find out how long a time period is? Well, we know that the time period is equal to 1 over f, the time period is equal to 1 over f, and f can be defined as omega divided by 2 pi. f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi, so we can write that in here. This is equal to 1 divided by f, or I should say omega divided by 2 pi, which is equal to 2 pi divided by omega. Remember, omega was equal to the square root of k over m, so the inverse of omega, 1 over omega, is equal to the square root of m over k, which means that this is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k, and that allows us then to calculate that period. How long will it be before the object is back in its original position? And that's how we can define that. If we want to define what the actual frequency is, what's the number of oscillations per second, we can then use this equation right here where f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi, or 1 over 2 pi times omega. And remember that omega was equal to the square root of k over m. In other words, if you want to calculate the frequency, that is equal to 1 over 2 pi times omega. Omega is the square root of k over m. And there's the equation that defines the frequency of oscillation. Here's the equation that defines the period, 2 pi times the square root of m over k, or frequency, 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. So now you have a better concept of what this equation represents. This is simply a mathematical form that defines the movement or the position of the object as it oscillates back and forth. So the cosine function is perfect, especially when your starting point is up to the right. You pull the block all the way to its maximum displacement in the positive x direction. You let go, and then the function defines the position as a function of time. If you now want to find out where it's at at some particular moment in time, plug in any value for time, multiply times the square root of k over m, that is then in radians, take the cosine of that angle in radians, multiply times a, that gives you the position. We'll show you some examples of how to do that in the videos to come.